So there are lots of developments on the legal front. We're going to talk about the Supreme Court going after its own clerks. We're going to talk about a long time, well-respected federal judge announcing it's time for the Supreme Court to operate under a code of ethics. We're going to talk about John Durham's spectacular failure in the Bill Barr orchestrated investigative witch hunt. And we're going to finish up with some thoughts about Merrick Garland by someone who knows him well. That's a lot to get through in just one short video, but uh, we're going to get through it because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So many legal developments, so little time. We could talk about the Supreme Court going after its own clerks on a snipe hunt looking for leaks when they should be going after one of their own for deeply unethical conduct. Clarence Thomas and his insurrectionist wife, Ginny Thomas. We could talk about Judge Reggie Walton, a longtime well-respected judge in the courts of Washington, D.C., a judge I appeared before as a federal prosecutor, because Judge Walton just called out the Supreme Court. And this needed to be said. The headline in Reuters, Federal Judge Takes Rare Step of Backing U.S. Supreme Court Ethics Code. And that article begins... A prominent Republican-appointed judge took the rare step of arguing that U.S. Supreme Court justices should be subject to an ethics code, saying the judiciary has done an inadequate job of policing itself against misconduct. And you'll recall, Judge Reggie Walton is the one who found and announced that Bill Barr lied to us about the Mueller report. You may also recall that Judge Walton is the one who called Donald Trump a, quote, charlatan, close quote. Remember that? While he was presiding over one of the insurrection cases, a defendant who attacked the Capitol on Donald Trump's orders? Here's what Judge Walton said. Donald Trump is a, quote, charlatan who doesn't, in my view, really care about democracy but only about power. And as a result of that, it's tearing this country apart. And you may not know, but Judge Walton was first appointed to a judge in the Superior Court for the District of Columbia in 1981 by President Reagan. He was then appointed as a judge in 1991 by George H.W. Bush. He was again appointed as a judge in 2001 by George W. Bush. It's fair to say Judge Walton is no bleeding heart liberal. Why do I say that it's fair to say that? I was in his courtroom just a matter of weeks ago with my criminal justice class from George Washington University. And if you'll indulge me a personal story and observation, not only did I appear before Judge Walton when I was a prosecutor, but I had my students in there. And you know what we were watching? You know what we were observing in Judge Walton's courtroom? We were observing Judge Walton's re-entry court. You know what that is? That represents a sea change in the way courts deal with people who have served their sentence and are re-entering the community. And it marshals all of the forces from multiple branches of government to try to help people succeed when they re-enter society, when they're on probation, parole, supervised release. And Judge Walton was answering questions from my students after the hearing had concluded. And he said, and I quote, look, I'm no bleeding heart liberal, close quote. That's what he said just weeks ago when I was in his courtroom. And he said that to frame his belief that the criminal justice system has to do better by people who are 
re-entering society. The system should be there to help, to assist, not to just beat them down if they violate probation, parole, or supervised release. Yes, I don't say this lightly. Judge Reggie Walton has been an American hero through this horribly dangerous period in our nation's history. Another story we need to talk about. Special Counsel John Durham. Remember him? Bill Barr commissioned an investigation into the origins of the Trump-Russia investigation, right? Bill Barr said, oh, you're going after Donald Trump? Then I'm going to order an investigation of the investigators who had the nerve to try to expose Donald Trump's crimes. This, friends, always had the feel of Bill Barr trying to help cover up the crimes of Donald Trump. And after three years and untold tax dollars spent, John Durham finally ended up bringing a case against a lawyer that he alleged lied to the FBI. And some of us former federal prosecutors, I'll speak for myself, looked at the evidence that was publicly reported and said, you know, this doesn't look right. This doesn't look like a supportable criminal charge. Turns out it wasn't. Here's the reporting about John Durham's prosecution going down in flames. This from NPR journalist Carrie Johnson. Headline, Special Counsel Durham Fails First Courtroom Test in His Three-Year Probe. And that article begins, A jury in Washington, D.C. has acquitted lawyer Michael Sussman on a single charge of lying to the FBI, dealing a blow to the three-year investigation by Special Counsel John Durham. Jurors deliberated for just six hours. I mean, friends, that's barely enough time for the jurors to retire to deliberate, select a four-person, and begin surveying the evidence. Deliberated for just six hours before delivering the unanimous verdict to a courtroom filled with the defendant's family and members of the news media. The jury forewoman, who did not give her name, told reporters outside the courthouse that, I think we could have spent our time more wisely. Quote, it didn't pan out in the government's favor and that's on them. Close quote. Can I interpret my interpretation what the four women said after having to sit through this Bill Barr Commission John Durham show trial? She said, you know, we could have spent our time more wisely. My interpretation of that is we could have spent time sitting as jurors in a case against Donald Trump and his co-conspirators for trying to kill our democracy. At least that's my interpretation. And then she said, you know, didn't turn out well for the government and that's on the government. My interpretation is this case never should have been brought in the first place. We never should have opened an investigation of the investigators who had the nerve to try to dig into Donald Trump's crimes, misconduct, and yes, collusion with Russia. Why do I say collusion? We saw Donald Trump say, hey, Russia, if you're listening, find emails, hack computer systems, steal property, and use it to my political advantage, and Russia was listening, and Russia did just that. That's a little thing I would call collusion. In fact, I'd call it a crime, interfering in our free and fair elections. So, you know, I think it's time for Merrick Garland to put this circus to bed, take down that tent, be done with this Durham charade, this Bill Barr commissioned witch hunt, if ever there was a witch hunt. And, you know, let's put this investigation to bed and move on to focusing on the people who just tried to bring an end to our democracy by corruptly overturning 
the results of a presidential election. I want to finish today's video by talking for just a few minutes about an article I just read in Salon, authored by journalist Chauncey De Vega. I'll put a link to the article in the description of this video. Mr. De Vega interviewed somebody who knows Attorney General Merrick Garland well, has known him for years, a gentleman named Norm Eisen. Now, if you don't know who Mr. Eisen is, he currently works as an expert in government and ethics at the Brookings Institution. He was previously a United States ambassador to the Czech Republic. He was special counsel to the House Judiciary Committee. He also worked in the White House Counsel's Office as special assistant to the president for ethics and government reform. That was in the Obama administration. And that is just some of his credentials, his background, his resume. And I want to quote at some length from the article in which Mr. De Vega interviews Mr. Eisen about Merrick Garland, among other things. The article is titled, Merrick Garland Fears No Person, says legal scholar Norm Eisen, and he's coming for Trump. And at the beginning of the article, they talk about Trumpism, or as Mr. Eisen calls it, Trumpery. And he defines Trumpery as follows. It's a combination of disdain for ethical restrictions, assault on the rule of law, incessant falsehood and disinformation, the shameless pursuit of personal and political interest, not the public interest, the exploitation and exacerbation of political division and attacks on democracy. And toward the end of the article, the conversation turns to Attorney General Merrick Garland, whom Norm Eisen has known for years. And here's what he says. Eisen counsels patients with Attorney General Merrick Garland and the Justice Department suggesting that the upcoming House Committee hearings on the events of January 6, 2021 will be crucial in holding Donald Trump and his cabal accountable for their obvious or likely crimes against the democracy. Question, is Merrick Garland afraid to prosecute Trump and other members of his inner circle because of norms and precedent about holding a former president accountable? What do you think the legal and political calculus is? And Mr. Eisen answers, Garland fears no person. I've known him for years, and he's a great American jurist and lawyer. He has said that he's going to follow the evidence where it leads and apply the law without fear or favor. He's going to let the chips fall where they may. I believe him. He's very methodical. He's very deliberate. There's some element of not bumping into the January 6th committee's work. There are strong norms at work here. You don't stampede into prosecuting a president. Garland also needs to restore another kind of norm, and that was the norm of a properly functioning Department of Justice. He's only a year and a half into his tenure, if even that long. He needs to get things settled down in the DOJ before he made such a momentous move. I have a lot of confidence in Merrick Garland's decision making. So friends, I think I'm going to leave it right there. Norm Eisen, very accomplished in his own right, has known Merrick Garland for years and has confidence in him and says point blank he's going to get Donald Trump. That has me feeling optimistic at the moment. And finding optimism where we can, like justice, matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.